Representative Lauren Boebert would like her new constituents to know that she was literally chosen by God. That's right. Uh, by God. <laughs> okay. Now, speaking to supporters at a watch party in Windsor, Colorado, on Tuesday, the Colorado carpetbagger, after a victory, vowed to make the country a, quote, righteous nation recognized throughout the world again by bringing back conservative values and Christian morals. So here we go again with the morals, right? We need more morals. The, the morals, lots, lots more morals. More, more, and more, more, more morals. Okay, right, okay, sure. Uh, she said, tonight we had a priority, and that was to glorify and honor God. Really, I thought, I thought your priority was to win the election. To praise the name of Jesus. To invite the Holy Spirit to be present, not only in this room, but in Colorado's 4th District, throughout Colorado, throughout the United States of America. What is she, like, is she at a, a, a revival? Or a campaign rally? <laughs> it's indistinguishable from going to a church. But yes, she talks about, that's the Holy Spirit, you see. We're, we're inviting the Holy Spirit. Are you sure? Are you sure? Um, look, maybe she realizes that it kind of took a minor miracle for her to win, okay? Uh, look, I say that because she received about 44% of the vote. Now, that's a lot, obviously. Uh, it's not the majority, though. Where did the rest of the votes go? She had five opponents. <laughs> so the rest of the vote was split among her five other challengers. Jerry Sonnenberg received the second most votes, but only 14%. Had the other Republicans lined up behind him, it's very possible that we would be discussing a very different result. That said, no guarantee, right? She had money, she had the name recognition, she had Donald Trump's endorsement. And so, you know, all those things do uh, add up. And uh, all right, so she ended up winning that primary. Now she continues, quote, we know that our rights come from God, not corrupt politicians. Your rights that you have been endowed with are not the governments to legislate away, to reason away, to purchase away. That doesn't even make any sense. Uh, and that is what I will always continue to fight for. Now look, the irony here is that religion has actually done a lot more to take away people's rights in this country, uh, right wing, whether it be, you know, right wing uh, Christianity here, trying to prevent gay people from getting married, uh, you know, from trans people from literally existing, what is happening now, um, religion being also excused uh, or used to uh, come up with excuses for slavery. God wants us to, God wants us to have slaves. That, that's why they designed black people the way that they did. Uh, we can't argue with that natural order. Yeah, yeah, uh, you can because it's not the natural order. Uh, but anyway, religion has been used to justify atrocity after atrocity, okay? It doesn't matter which religion. I and mean, you, you can point to all different religions all throughout history. Somebody has used any particular religion, religion you know, Islam, uh, for example, you know, used to justify atrocities. Christianity mm -hmm. used to justify atrocities. It, it, religions all over the world. Same, it's the same story. People will use God or God's in order to justify them doing terrible things and say, well, it, it wasn't me, it was it was them. I was ordered by uh, God. I was just I was being a good, you know, uh, a good uh, soldier for our deity. And so that's one of the big problems I have with religion, okay? You can use it pretty much in whatever way that you want for both good or ill, and too many people use it for ill. And, and that includes Lauren Boebert. So now the irony here, um, oh, by the way, talking about people's rights, right? And religion generally being used to take away people's rights. Lauren Boebert happened to have sworn on the US constitution. She swore to uphold the constitution, which is what protects our rights from the government. She is putting one thing over the other. Now the ir other irony about this, is she's not even doing good at being a Christian, <laughs> okay? Again, she's divorced her husband in a very high-profile split that at least on one occasion involved a visit from the local police. She was thrown out of a Denver theater for vaping and groping her date in a place where children were present, okay? You're not supposed to do that. Uh, and then, of course, lied about it. That's the other thing. She also bears false witness for Donald Trump 
whenever he lies about the 2020 election, because she continues to spread the big lie. But apparently none of that seemed to have mattered to the 44% of voters who voted for her in the 4th District. So I guess congratulations on that. Her carpetbagging won. So now, getting back to one of the reasons that she went uh, had won. Her slavish devotion to former President Donald Trump, who was also a convicted felon. How slavish is her devotion to Trump? Well, she showed up, as you can see in that image, to her own victory party in imitation Trump sneakers. Now, I say imitation Trump sneakers because that's what they were. They were fake and made in China. <laughs> in fact, she even admitted it. She's like, quote, these are very China, but I'm okay with that. If I could have brought the OGs, I would have. But since you couldn't, you just bought the knockoffs from China instead. Really? That You thought that that would be a good idea? I mean, look, wearing the originals would have been tacky as hell, but at least they would have went to benefit Trump, all right, if that's what you're going for. This is a cheap Chinese knockoff, which, again, she's only wearing to give the illusion that she is supporting Trump and it's the real deal, right? That's worse. I mean, why do it at all if you're going to go this, this route, all right? So uh, now there's uh, another thing that I do want to bring up, too, that's a little bit more serious than what shoes she decided to wear. One of her Republican opponents actually ended up having to move his campaign watch party because someone shot at it. I kid you not, Stephen Valera had issued a press conference on Tuesday stating that the Pueblo County Republican HQ office was hit by gunfire, forcing his campaign to move their watch party to a different location. He said that the motive of the perpetrators was unknown, but that he will not be intimidated if this was intended to send him a message. So, Bobert wins primary. One of her opponents gets sh the, their their watch party office shot at. I mean, that's that's pretty serious stuff. Okay, it's what concerns me. This message is as a, as a joke that Lauren Bobert is, uh, and a complete and utter hypocrite. She is a Christian nationalist, and those people worry me, and they should worry you. <laughs> if you're not a Christian nationalist. You should be very concerned about the Christian nationalists. A very, very small group of people, but they're dangerous. If, if her followers, and I don't know if it's true, but if her followers are the ones that are taking pot shots at other Republicans to try to intimidate them, then I think that that is a really, really bad omen. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon in order to get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support independent, progressive media through this difficult time where it seems like everybody is shutting down, you can become a member on our YouTube page, you can become a subscriber on Facebook, or you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Thank you.